Welcome back to Fight Network. Cody Saftik here with you. The Abu Dhabi Grand Slam Jiu-Jitsu World Tour is set to go down January 12th and 13th from the Mubadala Arena. It's a massive tournament open to all belt levels and it offers amazing cash prizes to the sum of $190,000. The event is organized by the United Arab Emirates Jiu-Jitsu Federation and now joining me on the line is one of the top Emirati grapplers. It's Salem El Suwaidi. Salem, thanks for taking the time and joining us today. Great to be here. Thank you for coming. Now, over the last 20 years, jiu-jitsu really seems to have grown a lot in terms of popularity amongst fans and a lot of people, you know, beginning to turn to the sport. How did you first become involved and uh, how has your journey through grappling been so far? Well, um, I started jiu-jitsu back in uh, April 2011. Um, I was studying in a small town in north- northeastern Pennsylvania and I just needed something to pass my time. And I was like, I was into MMA a lot. I, li- I loved you know, watching the UFC, and I was like, you know what, I, uh, this is pretty interesting, it wasn't that great for me at first, as a first impression, but then I tried it out back at April, um, kind of liked it, and then I moved, I, uh, basically moved to, uh, California, and then, um, and then still didn't take much of jiu-jitsu, and then, uh, as a white belt, I joined this, uh, academy that looked like it was a, you know, a home the wall, it wasn't that great. Turns out it was one of the best uh, jiu-jitsu academies uh, around the area. And uh, one month in, I was pretty much hooked. I uh, I loved the small, you know, it's just, the greatest thing about it is that um, it just uh, forces you to be humble, forces you to have great sportsmanship. And um, and that basically was uh, how I kind of, I, my love of MMA kind of guided me into jiu-jitsu basically got that to be my number one passion and I just stuck with jiu-jitsu and basically it's a part of my life right now. You've had a lot of success training as a blue belt, you've had a lot of success competing as a purple belt as well. Recently I believe you've been promoted to brown belt, um, how have you found that change in competition for you? Um, the, well the Grand Slam, the Abu Dhabi Grand Slam would be my first tournament as a brown belt. Um, so uh, looking forward to it. It's a uh, it's a completely different game with you know the introduction of Sol to the bar. So I would say I'm, I'm I would say I'm excited for it and uh, pretty cautious. So uh, it's uh, it's a completely different game. And then don't get me started about the black belt world. That is a completely different planet. You're competing basically against some of the best guys of the world of the sport. So um, so it's pretty. Uh, I would say. I would say uh, I'm uh, cautiously optimistic in this tournament. As you get to that brown belt and then eventually to that black belt level, it's nearly impossible to submit some of these guys because they're all 10-year veterans of the sport. They're all, you know, the the, the best in the world. Does your does your game kind of change as you move up the ranks now that you're a brown belt? Do you have to focus more on trying to get the points, trying to get the advantage, or is it one clear, you know, go for the submission every time? How does the mindset change a little bit as you progress through the ranks? Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, um, you've got you've got a lot of fighting styles. You've got like, uh, for example, some guys that always go for uh, go for you know position then submission, you know, kind of thinking get the get the position, get the points, and then just go for the uh, for the submission. And then you've got like uh, like, like for example, Gabriel Argis, You know, he's very well uh, into the the control. You know, the the great technique of the you know of the of the matchup. Um, uh, taking submissions whenever he gets them, but then you've got some other guys like Edwin Najmi, for example. Uh, first, I think his second year as a black belt, uh, and um, you know, going, going all out, just basically risking it all. With back in the day, it was flying triangles, and now uh, nowadays, just going for uh, crazy dar strokes, uh, crazy back takes, blah blah, and esteem lock. So, uh, and I didn't even mention like how crazy the game is going to be with you know not worrying about being dq'd for an esteem lock you know because that kind of like uh gets into like uh the gray area when it comes to you know toe holds and esteem locks but um so basically you've got these guys that just jump for the submission um for me honestly uh on my on my end my i'll just keep on doing my game to be, it'd be a bit more focused and my game is basically um, if I see a submission, I wouldn't jump for a submission, but like uh, I'm always the kind of guy that would always go for position, then sub- 